Good morning. Happy Vlogmas Day 22. It's like 6.30 in the morning and I'm at Walmart because silly me, I forgot to bring any tights to training and I have a dress and um, I need some tights because my tattoos are going to show and I don't want to lose my job. So <laughs> I had to get up a little earlier than planned and like catch an Uber over here real quick. And I'm trying so hard not to get distracted in the Walmart because Walmart is just full of goodies everywhere. And it's Christmas time and they have all these cute gift sets and I haven't bought one Christmas gift. Today is the 22nd. <laughs> only me, right? Uh, well, not, not even only me. I've got flight attendant lifestyle. I just don't have time. I could online shop, but you know. Every time I do online shop, I start shopping for myself. Call me selfish. Call me whatever you want. That's just what happens. Got what I needed, guys. Stayed on task. The Uber should be pulling up in like two minutes. Really, the Lyft. Ubers take so long. Lyfts are just like here in like two seconds. Maybe Orlando just has more Lyft drivers than Uber. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Is that my ride? I feel homeless without a car. Especially in a city like this, you know? It's, it's, I don't know how I feel about it. I want my car. <laughs> Back to the hotel. It's, it's so funny when people just stare at you when you're vlogging. Like they've never seen a camera <laughs> or a phone. <laughs> Good morning. I think I want a waffle. Like, I'm down here, so I might as well eat. You know, I never eat this breakfast because the breakfast at the lodge is better. But I'm super hungry this morning, so I'm gonna make me a waffle real quick. And, um, go upstairs and get ready. I have, so I think, what time is it? It's 6 41. Shuttle comes in. 7.45. I have an hour. The art of making your waffles. So what I'm thinking is, is that I'll do a chit chat, get ready with me video this morning. I don't think I've ever really done one of those, but I don't know what to chit chat about. <laughs> I wish this was like a Facebook live where y'all, we could interact live. Y'all could ask questions, I could answer, you know, but maybe I'll do like things y'all don't know about me. But I'm such an open book and I just say what's on my mind when I want that y'all probably already know everything. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think I should talk about? <laughs> Vlogmas, Vlogmas Day 22 is going to be tough. <laughs> Alright guys, back at the hotel room. Going to try to do something with this face. I have like, I'm going to give myself 30 minutes it really shouldn't take that long but um i don't know y'all like i'm sorry i'm trying to find all my my makeup stuff so if i'm not looking forgive me so i don't know what should we chit chat about today um oh yeah i said i was going to do things that you all don't know about me but i think y'all know everything <laughs> So let's see. Let's just do some random facts, even if y'all do know them. 
I am 29 years old, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Both of my parents are from Jamaica. I know I have a few subscribers out there in Jamaica. Hey y'all, or from Jamaica, or family is Jamaican. Shout out to all of y'all. My mother is from the Montego Bay side, Hanover, Hopewell. My father is from Spanish Town, Jamaica. Um, yeah, you know what? It's Christmas time. I think I'm just gonna kind of give y'all a background of my family, because y'all know I, I, I really love including my family in my vlogs because obviously they're a huge part of my life like huge so we're gonna make this video about them because I just love them so much so <clears throat> my father is 14 years older than my mother um, so he was already here in the United States when they originally met in Jamaica. They met in Jamaica and she ended up moving here and they got married. He was living in Chicago at the time, hence why I have a sister in Chicago and family there. Um, but when my mom moved to the United States, she didn't know anybody here except for one person in Houston, Texas. So she decided to come to Houston, Texas, which eventually made my father move to Houston, Texas. Um, my mom was 20, I think she was like 21-ish, she was in between like 21, 23 when she first moved here from Jamaica. She was the first one out of her seven siblings that lived in the house with her to move to the U.S. Um, and yeah, she came here and she got, she became like a secretary but that just wasn't really her lifestyle. So then she went to cosmetology school and she became a hairstylist. And my dad was driving trucks for, I think, I think he said DHL, like back in the day. And they ended up creating his own dump truck service business. And my mom opened up her own hair salon. And then fast forward a few years, here comes me in the belly. Um, my mother was 20 six when she gave birth to me um my father was i think 40 when i was born isn't that like a big age difference y'all it's kind of weird when you think about it number wise but i you know kudos to her whatever <laughs> that, you know what's actually funny this is this little chat is gonna be all over the place my stepfather the one that y'all saw in the the video um, during vlogmas when they were dancing and stuff. That's my stepfather. Um, and he's the same age. He's 14 years older than my mom too. So she likes him old. <laughs> she would kill me. She doesn't really watch my vlogs, so she's never going to hear that. Oh, but <laughs> she would murder me. Um, but yeah. So anyways, Andrea, that's my mother's name. She likes him a little bit older. And three years and three days later, here comes my brother, Andre, the big, big black boy that's been in like some of my videos. Um, he's big. Y'all, it's really hard to do eyebrows and talk at the same time, so give me a second. Okay, they're a little uneven, but eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins. But whatever. I'm <laughs> just like, whatever. I don't really care today. Um, so, yeah. So, three years and three days later, my brother comes along. My birthday is June 2nd. His is June 5th. We are butting heads as Gemini's. Like, it's so crazy, y'all. Um, but then, all my mother's siblings started trickling into the United States after she moved. So, I believe it was Auntie Sandra who came after that. Um, that's the one in Fort Lauderdale, the crazy one. He came, moved here, 
left my cousin Katie in Jamaica with my grandmother for a while while she got her life settled in the United States. This is so hard to talk and do makeup. Like, how did the blue, how did the beauty bloggers do it? I can't like think and do this at the same time. I'll probably never do this again. <laughs> but um, yeah. So then Auntie Sandra came. She had my cousin Katie at the time, so she left her in Jamaica with my grandmother at the time while she came to the United States to kind of get her life settled. She moved here to Houston, obviously with my mother. Um, Katie eventually ended up coming, and then things took them to Fort Lauderdale. So that was then. And then I have my other aunt. Um, I'm trying to think. When was she in the vlogs? Auntie Sherio. I don't know if she's in the vlogs, um, but she definitely will be for Christmas, so I'll point out all the aunties. Um, she, I don't remember when she first came down here. I think she, was, this might not be the first time she came, but she did come down here from Jamaica to give birth to her son, which is my cousin, Ella. He's the one that was playing the basketball game in one of those vlogs, the one that's at the army base. The one when I got my CJO and he was getting pinned, that one. That's her son. So she came here to Houston, gave birth to Ella, and then they were here for a little while and then went back to Jamaica and then came back eventually. All of that, then eventually... Uh, my grandmother came to the United States, so that brought back Auntie Sherio and Ella to Houston. So it was me, my brother, my mother, my father, Auntie Sherio, Ella. Well, Auntie Sherio was kind of back and forth at the time between the United States and Jamaica. Um, we were all kind of growing up together. And then at the age of 10, when I was 10, my grandmother passed away from a, um, a heart attack. So when that happened, um, Auntie Sherio moved back, or she was already here, like I can't really remember, this story's all over the place. So when my grandmother passed away, my uncle, the one I was talking about the other day that fixes my car and stuff like that, that's like a jack of all trades, he ended up moving to Houston as well because... You know, one of the last promises he made to my grandmother was that he would come to the United States to get his master's because he's he's very, very smart, y'all. So he promised her he would come here, you know, and, and go to college, finish school and or, you know, get more degrees and things like that. So that's what he did. So when he did that, he ended up bringing his wife and um, my younger cousin, Carenza. She's the one that lives in San Antonio. Um, and yeah, so we had, when I grew up, I had, this is at the age of 10, there was my mother, one of my aunts, one of my uncles, his wife, so two aunts, five, and my father, five adults living in this house, and then me, Andre, Ella, and Carenza, uh, four kids, so that was a total of nine people living in a house, we had a one, two, three bedroom house, two and a half full baths, and then my dad built on like an extra portion to the house to kind of make more space. So when I say I grew up like really, really close knit with my family, we were super, super close. You know, like I didn't need friends. All I had was family. Like literally that that's how I thought about it. I didn't need no friends. A few years later, I think I was in the eighth grade, so I'm like 13 at the time. There came along another little baby in the belly. My uncle and my aunt, they were having my cousin Norman. So that then that, so that added an extra person to the household. So we all grew up super, super close knit. Every summer from when I was like very, very young, we went to Florida, to Fort Lauderdale. All the kids, so all four of us, because Norman wasn't born yet. It, we all shipped off to Fort Lauderdale to Auntie Sandra's house. Obviously, my cousin was there and um, her other daughter, my other cousin Ashley, was there as well. So we would spend half of the summer in Fort Lauderdale and then the other half of the summer we would go to Jamaica. And sometimes we would be at my dad's apartment or sometimes we would be at my grandpa's house on the farm. So our summers were always full of activity and family. Like that's literally all I knew for 
a good portion of my childhood was just family. Like, yes, I had friends at school and things like that, but family, 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 that was it for me. That was just the way that I was raised. That's how I grew up, and I'm, I'm so blessed and thankful for that. Um, so then eventually my mother and my father got divorced, um, when I was, I'm putting on more concealer y'all because I really want this face to pop today. I usually don't do that, but I'm just feeling it today. Um, <laughs> my mother and my father ended up getting divorced when I was like either 13 or 14, um, that was really, really hard on me because I was a very, very big, like, I was a daddy's girl, y'all. So, I love my mother to death and I know y'all can tell that. But, you know, at that time, I was just daddy's girl and that was just, that's just what that was. So, I was, I was hot at my mother for divorcing my father, you know. When you grow up, you realize things just, just aren't as simple as that. But, yeah, so... And then my mother ended up getting married to my stepfather at when I was like right before I was going to the 10th grade. So I think my parents got divorced like either 7th grade or 8th grade. I don't know why I can't remember this right now. And then right before I went into the 10th grade, um, my mother got married to my stepfather like five days before my 15th birthday. So she uprooted my life, literally uprooted my life um it was during the summer when they got married so they got married in like may and then you know we're moving to the other side well not really the other side of houston but we're moving to my stepfather's house and i didn't want to leave y'all i did not want to leave i did not want to leave because i've been in this neighborhood my whole life my family are here you know at this point in time i'm in high school you know i just finished my freshman year of high school i'm making friends um, you know, I have a little boyfriend that lived around the corner, so I didn't want to go, like, at all. And I was just still kind of bitter that my mother divorced my husband and married another guy. Like, that's just, you know, what I thought as a 14-year-old, 15-year-old child. So, for that summer, I actually ended up staying at that house still with all my aunts and uncles, but I knew that I was going to have to eventually move um, with my mother and my stepfather and my brother to where, you know, our new lives were going to begin. So, you know, went through the whole summer holding on to hope that I wouldn't have to leave, you know, trying to come up with every excuse in the world of why I needed to stay and why, you know, going to this new school wouldn't be good for me. And of course, I was only doing that, you know, because <laughs> I wanted to stay with my boyfriend and my friends and things like that. And I just didn't want to be in my stepdaddy's house at the time. Summer is coming to an end and um, it's time to move. And to be completely honest, the neighborhood that I was moving from was a predominantly black neighborhood, black and Hispanic neighborhood. I was at a predominantly black high school. Um, and the neighborhood I was moving to, predominantly white. So it was, it was a change for me. Like, it was like, what, 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 what is this? <laughs> like, literally, you know, that's just what it was. That's, that's just my honest truth, y'all. So, I get there, and I, I remember my first day of school, you know, I was just like, no, I'm going to come up with every reason in the book not to um, stay here at this school. Like, I just want to go back over here and be with my boyfriend and my, you know, my friends and the lifestyle that I was used to and things like that. Like, but... So, got there, you know, to the high school, and the first, like, six weeks report card or something came out, and I was making C's and D's, right? Purposely, you know, just not putting in effort, you know, mental block, because I just didn't want to be there. So, I was like, well, I told myself in my mind, I was like, well, if I, um, you know start struggling at this school or making it seem like I'm struggling at this school, maybe my mom will send me, 
you know, back over here to live with my aunts and uncles so I can still go to the same school that I was at prior. Y'all, I tried it. <laughs> I tried my entire life, okay? Um, <laughs> that report card came home. And my mother, my mother is the one that believes in discipline and the use of a belt to whoop that behind, right? She wasn't about to play with me. So, long story short, report card came home and I had to deal with the consequences of acting like I was a dummy. I don't know why I even thought I would even be able to like play my mother like that, like say that was legitimately like the reason why my mother is way too smart for that like and I'm way too smart for that and she knew that so she was like what's going on you know why are you getting these type of grades and things like that you know and I told her I was like the school's too hard I can't learn here I can't concentrate da, 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 da. and she but she basically told me to get over it this is where you're going to be this is good what your life is going to be so you better just learn to adjust there was no if ands or buts about it that was it. So I had kind of started making a few friends here and there. One of my best friends that I have now is the first girl that I met at that high school. Um, <laughs> and it's so funny the way that we met. So, you know, that was, she is, she's a very pretty, light-skinned girl, long hair. And I remember her walking through the hallways in our room. You know, I was just sitting or standing somewhere by myself. This is the first day that I saw her, and I was just like, mm, look at that bougie girl over there, you know, like, that stereotypical, you know, stuff. You know, I was young, and I was dumb. I ain't know no better. So, a few weeks later, I eventually ended up switching some type of classes around, and I ended up being in the English class, in the same English class that she had, and, you know, we ended up becoming friends. She wasn't, you know, the stereotype that I thought she would have been and things like that. Um, and we've been friends ever since then. You know, like, I'm her child's honorary godmother. Um, at least that's what I say. <laughs> we um, went to college together. We were roommates for three years of our college lives. Um, and we're just still really, 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 really good friends. If it wasn't for that, going to that high school, meeting new people, learning new things, um, I wouldn't be the open-minded person that I am today. And, you know, I still definitely have a lot of friends that went to the original high school that I was at. And I held on to them. My best, best, best friend, I've known her since um, the eighth grade, so... She still went to the high school that I left and things like that. I'm grateful for the fact that my mother made me stay at that school because I made some lifetime friends. Um, being in that neighborhood, at that school, in that area, it just really opened my eyes to more of what the world had to offer instead of, you know, staying in one, one neighborhood and having one type of friend. Like, I was able to broaden my horizons, be or be more open-minded about things, learn things, learn different nationalities, diversity, and all of that. I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. I don't personally think if I would have stayed at the high school or neighborhood that I was at before. And I'm not saying that that neighborhood, you know, doesn't teach you anything or that area. That's not it. I'm just saying personally for me, I can see now how that change in my life has made me who I am or what pushed me towards the person that I am and that I'm continuing to grow to be. So after high school, y'all why does powder do all of that? After high school, me and my light skin friend that I made, we decided that we wanted to go to college together. And she was gonna study, um, biology she wanted to do pre-med and I wanted to study fashion merchandising so we went and visited a few schools and I remember we had went to Texas State and we didn't like it because they had like those those like dorm style bathrooms over there called, where, I don't know like where the whole dorm shares like one bathroom almost like a like a locker style bathroom so we didn't go there um, and we just could not make up our mind on a college. So eventually one day my mom came to me and she was like, why don't y'all just 
go to Sam Houston. You know, it's a really good school. It has, you know, what both of y'all want. You know, y'all should try that out. So, we went and visited. We liked it. But we still didn't know we, what we wanted to do. So, we literally, how we decided what college we were going to go to, we put all the names in a little thing. And we just drew one name. And it said Sam Houston State University. So, that's how we decided what college we were going to go to. Sam Houston State University is like, it's in Huntsville, Texas, which is in between Houston and Dallas. It's about an hour and a half away from Houston and maybe about two hours away from Dallas or so. My college experience was amazing. Like, I absolutely love it. I know sometimes I tell people, I'm like, I don't know why I went to college, you know. I don't actually use my fashion merchandising degree, which I mean I have in the past for sure. But now at this point in life where I know what it is what I, that I want to do and, you know, I'm a flight attendant, I'm a real estate agent, you don't need a degree for those things necessarily. But I am very glad that I did go to college to have the experiences and make the friends that I did make. College is definitely the best, best part of life. Like, I believe that. Give me a second, guys. Let me put this eyeliner on. But yeah, y'all, that is... um. Alexia's life a little bit. I just kind of want to chit chat and fill y'all in on me a little bit more and my family and friends. But I am like running out of time, like always. It's like 7:35. I don't know where the time went, but I gotta go. This hair y'all I'm so ready to go back to my fade <sighs> my mother started it when I was like in the seventh or eighth grade and she came home one day and she was bald she didn't have any more hair and I was like what in the world so I cut my hair off the week after prom not this short it was more like a Fantasia style but that's when I first started cutting my hair and I've never been a fan of having hair really and truly <laughs> ever after that <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed story time good morning time with Alexia make sure you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed learning more about me personally and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you know every time I am posting a video happy vlogmas day 22 bye